Hey guys, this is a special one. This is another episode of Easy Come, Easy Go, where I get one guitar or several and trade them. And if you don't understand the format, there's going to be a whole playlist up there. Now, I'm going to go through some guitars in this episode. And I know that at some point I have to accept some responsibility for what happens to you. I don't expect you to take ownership of your behavior. Who does that anymore? You can blame me. Well, Ken said, I, I know what you're doing when your wife gets up on you. I know that. No, regular. Come on, wake up. Anyway, I know that if I'm going to be the source of the inspiration of your covetousness. Some of you have it real bad, some of you not so much, but I am prepared to try and pray it out of you for the ones that got it bad and for some of those that don't. That said, I'm not responsible for whatever happens to you. Now, I've been working on guitars. Um, I am about to put all the electronics on Punkin. You remember Punkin? You've been saying, when's he ever going to get done with Punkin? Well, Santa tells me I got to be, there's guitars falling around all over here. And it's raining on the roof of the shed, so I haven't seen any leaks yet. But anyway, I had to put Punkin aside. Now, you know, there's a playlist for Punkin right up there between... Uh, the Galliano Junk Pile and Pumpkin, if you are redoing these old arch tops, I don't know what you're doing. Don't try to be like me. You know, if they make a Ken doll that looks like you, then you can try to be like me. But in all seriousness, um, those two arch tops, if I don't do something in the episodes for those two guitars, again, there's playlists up there, then there's probably nothing that you're going to run across that's not there. But, but let's get to the point here. I don't play guitar. I, I don't know what's wrong. I don't care. But I do like to have some special guitars. And to get those guitars, you need to do some work. Um, how many of you show of hands? Hey, people that know me, they'll, they'll tell you, you know what? When he says show of hands, never raise your hand. Ask me sometime about hydraulic principles in palm stems at a conference at Lake Las Vegas in Nevada, uh, about 1999 and I will not tell you <laughs> some people were there I am still a cult hero over that even beyond uh, Honest Dave up there on the cigarette thing in, in Mr. Palkey's class anyway we're getting way out in the weeds here but here's the moral story if you want guitars that you're not going to go pay top dollar for you can trade off guitars and at some point if you get really 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 lucky and the stars line up you might end up with something like the number 12 junk pile you mind if I take this here Clark it looks <laughs> to be a quality item thanks Troy anyway what are we going to talk about well we got a gap in the rain so I went and saw my friend Leo from Lano, L-L-A-N-O, Lano, California, cultural capital world. I actually filmed an episode in a silo that was built by, I think it was communists. I think it was the only communist compound that's ever been built in the United States. And I'm going to give you a link to that episode up there. Now. Um, I imagine I won't be able to, um, once everybody figures out that Russia and Ukraine and all that are together, uh, they'll take the uh, monetization of this episode. So 
I'll lose probably 30, 35 cents. So try to remember me, Ken. Ken. At Christmas, you know what? When you're my age and you were the big deal in the 60s, you were the big deal, right? And then you're thrown away like trash. Anyway. My friend Leo and Lano had three. One, two, three guitars. There comes the rain again. Are there Eurythmics outside? Anyway, Leo comes to me and he says, I got three guitars. Now they're all flat top guitars. And there was a time when you couldn't get in here with a flat top guitar, but you know I've been working on the Gibson B25 with the horrendous plastic bridge from the same time as Kandal come out, 62, 63. And that Martin 0017 that I've been working on. So I've kind of been getting, what's the word, groomed, um, brainwashed, cultured, I don't know. And that I'll have flat tops. I can only have them in my shed for so long before I start to get anxious. So they got to go. But I got three flat tops. I'm going to tell you what they are, and then we're going to go on an adventure because I'm going to make them disappear, and we're going to turn into something that I want. So, that said, let's look at the first one. I don't know anything about nylon strings. I don't know anything about these guitars. But I'm going to tell you, this is a Galvador Ibanez GA 1401. It was made by Galvador Ibanez. I don't think that's Ibanez uh, guitars and all that gives us up, but the label is still in it. Look at that. Let's do the dreaded flyby. Now, it has a spruce top. A mahogany neck, sides, and back. Um, this guitar uh, started production in the 1990s and continued on this model through 2013. And I'm thinking this one is from the 90s. It is a clean one owner. It's not beat up. It's got some pretty shiny stuff on here. I mean... Someday when it grows up, it may look like number 12. But here is that first guitar, first of three, the Galvador Ibanez GA51401. 12 frets to the body, like an old blues guitar. 25.6 scale, made in... Your favorite country and mine, China, where every guitar is made now anyway, right? That is number one. This is very clean. I don't know what it sounds like because I can't play. Besides that, the rain would drown me out. Let's go to guitar number two. One, two. I think the rain is slacking off a little bit. So you might be able to hear me, or it really doesn't matter because nothing I'm going to tell you is either valid, important, or real, and or. Ooh, look at this one. This is a Suzuki SNG-2, three-quarter size guitar. It has a spruce top, a mahogany neck. And size. No, it has. Let's start over, shall we? It has a mahogany neck, a spruce top, and NATO, NATO, N A T O, wood sides and back. This guitar started production in Japan in 2003 and continued for several years. It may be even continuing now um, this guitar has been played it's got a couple little nicks in it and stuff uh, but it is a clean one owner um, 
this guitar, the Suzuki Company, is actually the Suzuki Violin Company. That company started when it was founded in 1887 by Masa Kiki, I know, Suzuki. And to, in 1903, they added guitars and mandolins to their line. This is a clean one owner. This is a nice three quarters student instrument. Let's do the flyby in the rain. If this were around my shop, I could dislike it the least of probably any arch top I've ever seen. Nice guitar. That is guitar number one, two. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at guitar number one, two. We're on three now. This guitar is called a Dreadnought. Dreadnought. I'm not sure how they uh, came up with that, but I have an idea based on my expertise with these instruments, which is nothing. I think they, re they call them dreadnoughts because I dread seeing a guitar that does not have F holes. Dreadnought, get it? Now, this guitar is a clean one owner. It's got great typical tuners. It is a honer. You've seen those people make harmonicas and that type of thing. This guitar was made in Korea in the 80s uh, through the early 90s. It is a large body guitar. It has a spruce top, mahogany sides and back, and it is a clean one owner. Look at this. Great tuners. Oh, there are metal strings on this puppy. I might, could love it. Regular, guys, come on. Nice fret markers, nice binding. So that's a lot of stuff that I am used to. But look at this. Somebody put a pickup on this thing. You can plug a jack into it. This is a nice looking guitar. It has a 25 and a half scale. That's how I make all the guitars I make. And that's how I set up. Everything that I build a neck and fingerboard for. Um, Honer, the model number on this one is HW400N, meaning natural up here. Um, yeah, it has a, a prominent V at the heel. Nice heavy rounded neck. This reminds me a lot of the harmonies and K's as far as how it's built, but it's a flat top. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, this is coming in the Honer Western series of guitars. Again, this is late 80s and early 90s. I think somebody would like this guitar. By the way, all of these guitars, the action is good on them. Wow. I don't know anything that's not open uh, D, and I don't know much about that. But again, this is a... Look at this. These guitars have a few little nicks and bumps here. The Suzuki is the one that's got the most of them. It was probably thrown around by a kid. But, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put these in cases, and we're going to hit the road, and we're going to go out, and we're going to trade these off for something. Now, we know the guitars that I like, well, they see me coming, so they'll... You know, it depends on who I go to, but we're going to put these in the hands of somebody else and we're going to bring something home. I don't know what it's going to be, but y'all know that I have only the highest standards. Okay, let's go. There are people out there hungry to buy decent Christmas presents for somebody and think they're doing them a favor by giving them a flat top. I just dread that it's not going to be me that doesn't end up 
with an arch top. Okay, yap, yap, yap. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get in the car. You just stay there. I'll get in the car. I don't need you in my car. I really don't. Yeah. Get some cologne. We'll, we'll talk about it later. We are at Guitar 48. Look at this display here. Elf on a shelf times 400. And of course, there's Rob's Guitar Ibanez Jamboree that I redid and put a trapeze and God knows what. I'll give you a link to that right up there right about now. So let's go in. They're open. Hey, Tam Tam. Hi, Tam. So we got all these guitars that I talked to you about scattered out all over the place. And they need cases and whatever. Here we go. And uh, it's easy come, easy go. And Rob is talking to me about this guitar right here. Oh my gosh, clean one owner. Look at that tailpiece. It looks like it has wood in it. It has a whammy bar. It's got F holes. You can't beat that. And of course, part of the deal was remember the Crucianelli? Remember the Northridge Nightmare? It's been a couple years, but. This got popped into the deal. 1964 Crucianelli. It's beautiful, man. Aria, doesn't have a mark on it. It's cool old tuners. Maple neck, made in Japan. Yeah. Here, height adjustment, intonation, back and forth. Very cool. I mean, working. It's beautiful. I don't know what you're gonna do with this though. Um, you're going to have to put this away and sell it as is, you know, you can't really. Are you saying that I can't really KP this guitar? It's a Friday night. <laughs> it's KP's Friday night. You know what? I think anybody who's a decent coveter would be happy with this one for Christmas. So guys, as always, Bring guitars into Rob. He's got a home for every guitar. And uh, some of these will go to people that like guitars. And uh, and I think Tam will be. Tam, yes or no on that guitar? Yes. Okay, partners, I am back in the shed, 
and I feel impressed to shed some light on this guitar. And let's start by doing <laughs> a chick flick teal match. Can you believe that? I'm going to light up a chick flick teal match. There we go. You know what? I don't know what happens. It just happens for me. I don't know why. It just does. Everything's always right. I wouldn't know what it would like, be like not to be me. And uh, sometime when I want to be depressed, maybe some of y'all can share what that's like. Anyway, let's talk about this thing. We're going to take it to the bench here in a minute. And I'm going to go through and show you a couple of things that aren't exactly perfect with it. But let's run through what I got here. Okay, this is an Aria model 5102T, 5102T. It was made sometime between 1970, late 1969 and 1975. Don't know when it was sold in the shop. It would have sold for $99 and another $15.75 for its case. So, let me get a little bit closer to the camera here and show you. Yeah, it's an Aria. And again, we'll look down a little bit closer, but it's got a whammy bar. It has humbucker pickups. It's got a three-way switch. It's got F-holes, volume and tone controls. But this guitar has the exact same features as an Epiphone Model 5102T, same number. They also made a number of these that were named uh, sold under the brand Lyle or Diamond, exact same guitar. Now, they were made in the Ma <laughs> blah, 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 Rented Lips Matsumoko factory in Japan. And here's kind of where things started to go south. This is before the lawsuit era that we know happened in the, in the early 80s or whatever. But here's kind of how you get yourself in trouble. If you, where are we at? You put a dog dish on your front porch and you don't have a dog, don't be surprised if a dog comes and eats the food. And if you keep putting food out there, the dog may keep coming. And then on top of that, you know how dogs communicate. They smell each other and they, oh, you've been over there at, Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitar Shed where there's a bowl. I don't know how they get all that information with their nose. Um, but anyway, we're so far off out in the weeds. But anyway, then the next thing you know, got all these dogs over there. So what has that got to do with the Matsumoko factory? Well, Gibson was having Epiphones made there. And they were being sent back to the United States. And so you got a factory where you've subcontracted your stuff overseas. And then it's a surprise to you that someone is making the exact same guitars in the exact same place with the exact same headstocks, pickups, tuners, the whole thing. And putting somewhere something else on them a different name. So that is no surprise to me. This thing has a maple neck and it has maple plywood body and sides. Now, unlike some semi hollow bodies, this thing is completely hollow. It stands to reason, even though the F holes are small, usually the tailpiece on a guitar like this is not a trapeze. See that that's got wood on it. We'll have a closer look at this in a minute, but usually there's a pillar block under the end piece 
which serves as a string holder and then the bridge is right there and usually some of that you've seen in some of the kits I build there's a block of wood there so this thing is thin but it is arched top and bottom we are going to be talking about this kind of model in a kit and I'm going to film an episode pretty soon where we're going to talk about uh, a thick complete hollow body guitar kind of like one of these the kits I build and then this style I'm going to build a kit like this and talk about feedback and um, how different artists use them and some venues are just not good for this because these things will feed back and howl at you anyway I think we're going to take this over to the bench now um, and we're going to look at some of the little flaws and some of the little issues I have to deal with but uh, that said I don't think I could have done better than what Rob did for me here let's go to the bench all right guys i'm going to try to do something a little bit different with the camera here and hopefully it's not too shaky but there is a maple neck on this thing it's a bolt-on neck you can see that um the tuners are original there's no other holes out anywhere on the neck so that's a clean one owner it's not a real pronounced open book headstock but yeah, you can tell that's what they meant to do. Now, this plate on here says it's a, a steel adjustable neck, meaning it has a truss rod. And I want you to notice here that there is a shim right there. It will illuminate this from the top a little bit better. But somebody has taken the neck off and adjusted it, and there's a strap button over there. Looking here, the pit guard screw mounting screw is still there um, there's a little bit of checking there's a big long checking line here um, but it's got a beautiful sunburst the trapeze tailpiece has the other uh, pin strap button and the input jack is right there but yeah, back of it looks great. All right, there's the headstock. It's got a piece of laminate. It's got the name. Again, the tuners are great. There's binding along the fingerboard. Nice fret markers, both on the fingerboard and on the side. And let's see if we can't get a little bit better look right here where that shim is it's right there and you can tell that it's angled nothing cracking around the strap button the pickups or humbuckers they're adjustable they move around a little bit um, there's nothing cracked everything is good this bridge is very interesting the stock specifications say these are Teflon rollers, I believe they are. Um, I don't know that somebody's replaced them. I do know that there's been work done on this bridge. And let me do a different mount with the camera so we can be stable about this. There's a lot to talk about right in this area here. Okay, I think that setup's a lot better. I like this. Uh, tail piece not only does it hold the strings in this whammy bar but it's got a nice piece of accent wood here um, it has these domed volume and tone controls volume is up here on each one um, tones over here three-way switches up here everything is intact here there's no problem with the wiring there's a little tiny bit of crackling on the pot, so I've got that thing that I can pull these off and, and put that cleaner on there and shoot that down, but nothing's hanging up. Now, this whammy bar is a little bit loose, and the, the thing about it is, is there's something that's working loose here. Let me get my... And you can see that. So with this, you just simply pull this up to this position, and you raise this up, 
and you can actually take let me get my hands empty you can take the spring out totally like that and then there's a bolt and a nut and I'll put an aviation nut on the bottom of this so that'll be an easy fix and that'll tighten up everything it's good to loosen up the strings a little bit before you do that but there's no major pitting or anything on here now this bridge you can tell that this one has been worked on it's it's pinned to the top it's um, floating the surface well I already tried to put a piece of paper in here but it's pinned and it's tilted just a little bit um, there is a height adjustment on the bridge and there is back and forth um, intonation set screws so there's back and front screws and again these are touted to be Teflon rollers that's interesting this is the kind of stuff on a guitar that's approaching well 50 years old that that kind of stuff if it's not kept uh, might not work now we've got somebody has has put these acorn nuts on the top here and I want to tell you something about these thumb wheels these are pretty good sized thumb wheels I've got a set of these that uh, are meant to sit on top of uh, a guitar directly but they're big like this and you'll notice on this one there are ridges kind of like you would find on a quarter or a dime um, and I've always said when you're looking at the parts of these things let's get this off of here this post right here and this thumb wheel if you go to buy these I'm I'm looking for a source for these uh, but they're $15 a set does anybody know where there's a source where you can source these because I had this idea I can buy all thread I can you know use any number of something to make this post but these thumb wheels, it's dawned on me, I could use a mercury head dime that the date of it was gone, making it relatively useless, but make period correct arch tops by using those dimes, drilling a hole, and then threading it appropriately. So I've had that idea for a while. And then when I got this guitar and I was looking it over close, what do you know? There is no ridges on this one. And when you look down upon it there's writing on it this is a u.s nickel is what it is so somebody got to me ingenious but i guess that qualifies it as a junk pile guitar again everything is pretty nice it's not perfect there are a couple of cracks that i'm going to have to uh, especially one up here um it's it's more of a gap and so i can use some acetone in the right color stuff to fix it it's not going to be perfect, but for the most part, the electronics on this guitar, just about everything is original. So um, I think you'll see this in a couple episodes of me showing some simple fixes and how to do those. But the binding around the F holes, everything appears to be great. I can't wait to run a camera down in here because there is some talk on different forums about this guitar and the ep Epiphones like it that tell us that this is supposed to be a full hollow body it's just um it, it doesn't have the same thickness as uh, some of the other ones that you've seen me work on but i'm gonna run a camera down in there and i'll let you know in a future episode but this is a very nice guitar all right there we go um this turned into a little nice little christmas gift uh, for me, you know it's not going to stay around. We're going to take this one and a couple more, and the episode will come, will come where I've got the stuff that I talked about fixed, and we'll bunch this up with something else, and I've got my eye uh, on a certain type of guitar I want. And you remember how we got the uh, 1918 Gibson arch top with the round sound hole? Yeah, kind of those kinds of things. So I always have a few guitars around that are pretty um, cool. In fact, I have two more like this under the brand Ventura. So one of them is actually 
very, very much like this one, almost down to the sunburst. So, thanks for watching. Give me a like if you haven't. I appreciate um, the feedback you give me and the comments you give me. And of course, we're starting to get into all different kinds of things. So, you have a question or something you want me to discuss, if I can, I will uh, do that. Just send me an email, which is at the end of the episode. Happy holidays, guys, and again, thanks for watching. I so much appreciate the support you give me and some other nice things I had written down over here by this flower that reminds me to be nice to you. No, you can't have this.